If you've used Power Query, you may already know that it has a web connector that allows you to connect to any web page and then get the data from there into Excel. But what do you do if you want to connect Power Query to multiple pages, then get the data from all these pages, combine them and get it in Excel? Well, you can easily do that as well. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Power Query and a little bit of M code magic to quickly combine the data from multiple web pages and get that in Excel. So let's get started. So here I have this new workbook that I'm going to use and I have this web page from which I want to get the data. So let me open the web page, which is this one. And I'm going to use this website called airlinequality.com. And within this website, I can get the reviews of airlines or airports. So if I come here and I type Heathrow and I hit enter, it is going to search for that airport and I can open this airport. And then here I have these 10 reviews. Now it has many reviews, but these reviews have been broken down into pages where one page only has 10 reviews. So if I want the next 10 reviews, I can click on two and get the set of next 10 reviews. Now with Power Query, I can connect to this page here. So I can copy the URL. I can connect to this page and fetch the top 10 URLs. But what if I want to then get the next 10 URLs, then I will have to connect Power Query to page number two and then page number three. But I can also use a little bit of M code to quickly connect Power Query to as many pages as I want so that Power Query in one go is going to connect to multiple pages, combine the data from them. So fetch the, all these tables, all these reviews, combine them and give to me in one single table. So I'll show you both of these things in this video. I will first show you how to get the data from one single page and then how to create a function to get the pages from, uh, get the data from multiple pages. So I have copied this URL here. Let's go back into Excel. And here I'm going to go into the data tab and then click on from web. And when I do that, it is going to open the from web connector where I can use the URL. So here I would enter the URL and then click OK. And now when I do that, Power Query is trying to connect to that web page and fetch everything it can find there. So all the tables and all the reviews. So it opens the navigator dialog box here and you can see it has fetched all these tables for me. Now you can go through these tables and then uh, zero in on the one that you want. I've already tried this so I know that my data is in table number 12. And here you can see I have the reviews in column number five. So because I want this data, I'm going to use this table. Now, before I get this table in Excel, let me quickly clean this table a little bit. So I'm going to click on transform data. So now it is going to open Power Query and give me this table within Power Query. So now here I have this and let's say I want the date and I want the review, which is in column number five. I don't want anything else. So I'm going to hold the control key. Column one is already selected. I'm going to select column five right click and then click on remove other columns. So it is going to keep column one and column five and it is going to remove everything else. Now I can change the name of these columns so I can call these dates and let me call these reviews. Also let me change the name of the query. So here I would change table 12 to let's say reviews. Now I can just get this data in Excel, but I can also do a little bit of cleaning. So I maybe I do not want trip verified or not verified. So what I can do is I can come here to any cell, right click, then click on replace values. And here I'm going to remove everything and only keep this trip verified part that I want to remove. And I'm, I'm going to replace it with nothing. So now when I click OK, it is removed. I can do the same thing for not verified. So right click, then replace values. And then I'm going to remove everything else just keep the pipe symbol here and then click OK. So it removes the not verified part as well. And now I can right click, go to transform and then click on trim. So it is going to remove all the leading and trailing spaces. So now my data is in a pretty good shape. So I'm going to go to the home tab and then click on close and load. So now this is going to insert a new worksheet in my workbook and then give me this data as an Excel table. So see what happens when I click on this. It is going to insert a new sheet called reviews and then it is going to give me the reviews as an Excel table. So now I have the data here. Now, if I go back to my web page and let's say I want to get the data from page number two. So it opens this page, the URL has changed to have page and two here in the URL itself. And now I can go back to my Excel. And if I just want data from page number two, I can open Power Query and then go to source and change this URL here. So as soon as I change this URL, Power Query is going to again try and attempt to connect with that web page, then get the data from that web page, do all the cleaning that I have done here, and then give me the data from second page in Excel. See what happens when I paste this here, and now I go back here, 
home and I let's say click on the last step here, Power Query will try and attempt to get the data from page number two. So now when I click on close and load, you'll see that it is refreshing here and it is going to change the data in this case. So we'll have to wait for this and you can see, yeah, the data has been updated. Now I have the reviews from page number two, but this is fine if you just want the reviews from one page, but what if you want to get the reviews from let's say five pages? So I want 50 reviews from one to five page. Now I don't want to do this again and again. So we can use Power Query to connect with five pages in one go, combine the data from all of them and give to us in one single table. So let's see how to do that. So let me open Power Query. So I'm going to double click on this reviews query. And what I'm going to do now is I know all the steps that are there. I know that this query can connect to a web page. What I really want to do is now convert this query into a function in such a way that the function takes the URL as the input and then using that URL, it is going to then give me the result as a table. So let me show you how to do this. What I'm going to do is in this case, I am going to first go to the view tab and then click on advanced editor. And when I do that, it is going to give you all the M code that is doing all the cleaning. So this is the M code that is enabling our query to go and connect with this URL here. Then it cleans all the data based on all these steps and then gives us the result. Now what I want to do is convert it into a function and to convert anything into a function, what you need to do in Power Query is if I just come here and I add this, so I have this bracket followed by an equal to sign and the greater than sign before let this converts my query into a function. If I just do this and I just click on done, see what happens. As of now, you see my query has this FX function here, which means that it has now been converted into a function. But the thing here is I have this query, but it doesn't do anything because I have created a function, but it doesn't know what to do when I give it the URL. Because first of all, it doesn't even know that if I give it any new URL, how should it use it? As of now, if I try and run this function, it would always refer to this URL here. But in my case, what I want to do is I want it to connect to page one and then page two and then page three. So I need to somehow make this part dynamic here, which is this two dynamic here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in an argument here and let's call this argument page number as text. Now it is very important that you put as text here because this is now going to be used in the text URL. So it needs to know that the argument that is going to be passed into it is going to be a text argument. And here I have two here, but I want to make it dynamic. So I'm going to use this argument that I'm going to pass into this function here. So I'm going to put this here. So what this means is if I now run this function the next time, it is going to ask me for a parameter, which is this part here. And when I give the parameter as one, it is going to fetch the data from page number one. If I give the parameter as two, which is the page number as two, it is going to fetch the data from page number two. But to do that, I'm going to put this parameter here, here in the URL itself. So what I'm going to do is I have this, then I would say, and page number and make sure this is correct and then ampersand and the slash. So what I've done is I've replaced two with this parameter here and now this parameter is something that can be dynamic. So now if I come out and click here, you can see it asks me for this parameter page number two. As of now, if I give it as page number one, see what happens if I invoke this function, something is going to happen here and it is going to give me the result. See what happens when I invoke this function, it instantly gives me the, f the results from page number one. If I go back here and let me remove this invoked function, if I come here and I give it as the function input as three, this becomes three. And then this URL is going to change to go to page number three, fetch the data from there and give it to me. See what happens when I click on invoke. Power Query is trying to connect to page number three, get the data from there, and then it will give me the data here in the invoked function query. See what happens? I've got the data here. So I know that my function is working, but I don't want to do this one uh, after the other. So I want this to happen automatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blank query here. So I'm going to show you two methods to do this. Let me show you the first method, which is to create a blank query. So I'm going to go to other sources and then blank query. So I right click here, go to new query, other sources, click on blank query. And here I'm going to simply type 
one dot dot five and when I do that and hit enter and this needs to be in curly brackets and now when I hit enter it gives me a list of five numbers so now this becomes my basis this could be the parameters that I pass into my function one two three four and five and then I can get the result here as a table in the next column but as of now this is a list so I will have to convert this list into a table so I would go to this transform option here in list tools and then click on convert it to table. When I do that, it asks me this, I can just click okay. And it gives me this column here and you can see I have these numbers. Now I can use the function where I can pass in the parameter one, two, three, four and five. So to do that, I'm going to go to add column and then click on invoke custom function. And when I do that, it asks me uh, what is the function that you want to use. In this case, I'm going to use the reviews function that I've already created. And then it asks me this reviews function takes a parameter, which is page number. What should I use? So I'm going to say column number because this is the column name. So I'm going to say column name here and then I'm going to select this column, which is column one. If you want, you can change the name of this column and then you can select that name. And now when I click OK, see what happens. It gives me an error. The reason this is giving me a, uh, this error is because in my function here, this is a text. This page number is a text. If I go back to this query, you can see this as of now is the data type any. So if I come here and I convert this into text, this should work. But I have to make sure that I am changing the step before the function. So I would let me remove this invoke function part here. Let me first convert this into text. And this is why I said this is very, very important. Power Query is very data type sensitive. So if I try and pass on numbers instead of text, while it expects text, it is not going to work. So first I change this to text and now I'm going to invoke the function. So I'm going to go to add column, invoke custom function. This is my custom function. I want to use column name and this is my column name. And now when I click OK and I continue, it is going to ask me about the privacy. You can just go ahead and ignore this and click on save. Now what Power Query is doing is it is trying to connect to all these pages, not just one page, but five separate pages. And then it will try and give us the data. So it will select table 12 from all the pages. Then it will, it will do all the cleaning that it is doing in the query, which is in the function that I've specified. It will clean all the data and it will give me all the data from each of these five pages as separate tables that I can combine. Now, because it is dependent on your own internet connection and the web page, it it might take a few seconds sometimes it might even take more than a minute so here I have the data you can see for page number one I get this table that has reviews from page number one for page number two I have these reviews that I get from page number two and so on so I have everything now I just need to combine this data so I don't need this column here so I can remove this I can come here I can combine this data so I can say use original column name as prefix, I don't need this. And I can just keep dates and reviews. And now when I click OK, it combines all this data, I can go back to home, close and load. And this is going to give me this as a new sheet. Now, uh, I already have a function as named as reviews here. So I can come here and I can rename this query as airport reviews. And now when I click on close and load, this is going to insert a new worksheet with the name airport reviews and it is going to give me all the airport reviews here. So now it's loading the data. And whenever you're trying to connect Power Query to web pages, it becomes slightly uh, slow. So you may have to wait a little bit if you're tr trying to connect to multiple pages in one go. So here it has given me this data and you can see there are 50 rows, which means that it has gone through 50 pages and it has given me the data here. In this case, dates are shown as numbers. So you can format the dates and show them in, in any format you want. So I can just select this and I change the date format to let's say long date format and I get it here. But if I go back to the query and now let's say I want it from three pages only, I can go to the source step in this query and I can, instead of five, I can just make this three. And now when I do that and I go here, you can now refresh this query and it is going to connect with three pages instead of five and give you the result. So now let's see what happens when I click on close and load and I come here, you'll see that this query is refreshing. So now it will go to three pages only instead of five and then give you the reviews from three pages. If you want it from, let's say 10 pages, then you go back into query and instead of one dot dot three, you make it one dot dot 10. So it will go and connect with 10 pages. So here you can see it has given me 30 rows, which means it went to three pages and connected there. Another thing you can do is, so let me go back to Power Query. And in this case, what I did is I manually created a list where I had one dot dot three in curly brackets. 
But what if you do not want to manually create it? What if, let's say, let me close this, I have a table here in Excel. So let's say I have this table here and I have these values here. And what if I want this to decide how many pages Power Query should connect with? So this table should decide whether uh, it would give me seven pages or five pages or three pages. So instead of me manually creating the list, I want my data to be dependent on this list. So I'm going to first convert this into an Excel table. So I would hold the control key, press the T key. It converts this into an Excel table. It shows me this create table. I click OK. Now I'm going to open this in Power Query. So I'm going to go to the data tab, click on from table range. Now it's called table three. You can maybe call this page number table or whatever you want to call it. And here, now I can just invoke the function and it will give me the result here right itself. So in this case, what I did was I created this list, then I converted this list into a table here, and then I invoke the function. But if I have the data already in Excel, I convert that into a table, get into Power Query, it already is there in the right format. I think I've messed up the table name here, so it should be PAGE, again, sorry for this. So now I have these numbers here, I'm going to come here to add column, click on invoke custom function, and then invoke the same function that I've already created, which needs page number, so I would say column name, then page number, click OK. When I do that, again, it gives me uh, the error here because I have to change the text type, the data type, so I always forget this. So let me remove this. First, convert this into text. I'll click on replace current because it already has a change type step. So I'll change this to text value. Now I will go to invoke custom function here. So let me select column name, page number here, click OK. Yeah, so it worked. Now I have the table here and it's giving me all the results from all these seven reviews. And now I can just go to the home tab. Sorry, first I have to combine them so I can come here, remove this column, then click here, uncheck use original column name as prefix, click OK. It combines all these reviews, give it to me here. And then I can rename this, it says reviews.1. I can maybe make this reviews. Go to the home tab, click on close and load, and it is going to now insert a new sheet here. And using the page numbers that are there in another table, it is now going to give me 70 records for all these airport reviews. So we have the data here. You can see there are 70 rows, which means that Power Query went to those seven pages, combined the data from those seven pages, got it into Power Query, cleaned the data, and gave it to us here. And now if I want, I can go here, I can remove this, for example, let's say I only want it from five pages. I can remove this. And now this table has changed. This table now only has five values. I can come here. I can refresh this query. And when I do that, it will take the values of the page number it needs to go to from the other table where I've just removed uh, two values. Use that, go to five pages, get the data from there and give it to me here in Excel. So you can see now it gives me 50 pages because I have five here. If I make this 10, it is going to give me 100 pages. So this is how you can use Power Query to connect to not just one single page, but multiple pages by using a table that can then be used to pass on the parameter to a function that you've created. And as I showed you, creating a function in Power Query is pretty easy. Once you have created a query, you can quickly convert it into a function and then use these parameters to run this function and get the data. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if Power Query and M code is something you are interested in, let me know in the comment section so I can create more videos on this. And if you have not already subscribed to this channel, please do that so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.